In our call to order, welcoming new guests, I'll just go around and introduce everyone. I'm Nick Tietzort, your chairperson. Uh, Patty Myers, Audrain County Treasurer, and Ellie Casey Treasurer. Uh, Sarah Palmer, Audrain County Health Department, Environmental Public Health Specialist, and I'm the Secretary for LEPP. Well, Kirk Jock, I'm the Director of the Missouri Emergency Response Commission. Peggy Payne, Executive Director of Access Our Safe Place. Uh, Brooks Pettit, um, Biodiesel Refinery Superintendent at ADM slash MAB and Vice President of LAPC. Ron Poffa, ADM and Marvel Coordinator. Zach Templeton, I'm Superintendent of Schools. Sergeant Smith, Augering County, uh, Bailiff Court Division. <laughs> Larry Johnson, we're going to fire. Steve Kenmore, Audrey County Sheriff's Office. Joe Goodwin, Audrey County Sheriff's Office. Susan Rocket, Mexico Public Safety. Bryce Mesco, Mexico Public Safety. Seven inches, Larry Early Center. Jeannie Ann Early, Arthur Center. Pam Early, I'm the Director of the Emergency Department at SSM Monitoring and the Emergency Management. Kevin Cash, all right in. Christy Robin, County Health Department. As he in the back with the juvenile office, <laughs> Jacob with prosecutor's office. That's right, thank you. The prosecutor. <laughs> and uh, Larry Ellis, Andre Angels. Travis Ray, Andre Angels. Brian Hay from Modoc, Gary Engineer. Thank you all for being here. Have us break up into little groups, kind of like we were seeing in Callaway last year. I've got a couple uh, boards to present. Nothing too extensive, just something to get some ideas flowing with uh, your particular groups. And then uh, we'll come up and talk about our ideas. And that should end our tabletop exercise. Uh, uh, we got some members of the ambulance district here. Other members that might be paged out because of fire stuff. If you got to leave, take care of real life stuff. You know, we can come back to this table top stuff. Uh, our assumptions for this scenario would be that the 911 has been notified of this and dispatched the appropriate fire services, that they've alerted uh, Ladonia City Police and the Sheriff's Office of the incident, and that the mutual aid agreements are currently in place and up to date. Uh, emergency management uh, is fully operational for logistical support on the scene. Um, and that uh, any county or regional resources that you have, not only for your agency, but for other agencies that you know about, that those are all still in effect and still in, the, in play. Okay. So the scenario is on Thursday, at 9, 10 hours, the National Weather Service advised of a tornado warning to the Audrain, or the central Audrain County area. <coughs> at that time, a semi-tanker hauling and hydrous ammonia pulled into a parking lot at 700 South Pine Street, in Ladonia uh, to wait out that storm. And at 920 hours, the reports of high winds began and uh, storm spotters reported the damage had uh, happened to the large area of that city and the impacted houses in the southwest corner of Ladonia. Uh, during the storm, the high winds impacted the semi-tanker and it overturned, this causing a hydrous ammonia leak and uh, rupture in the diesel fuel tank. The driver of the semi-truck is injured and is unable to escape the cab on his own. <coughs> that, uh, 9.25 hours, 9-1 uh, begins to call out responder and uh, agencies after receiving multiple 9-1 calls. The reports of those responding units, or I'm sorry, 9.30, the reports of those responding units are that large amounts of white smoke is coming from the semi. The people at the scene surrounding the area are requesting medical attention, complaining of coughing, irritation when breathing, burning of skin when the cloud touches them, or if it touches them. Uh, 9.33, that says 19, it should be 9.33, reports of small fire power outages and trees blocking the roadway uh, structures uh, are collapsed along the area of the storm. The ball field right here, and down, down to the first few bit of one mile already here. You know, they might say, oh, it's the same. They're not going to walk out to go anywhere. If they're not going to go anywhere, they're not going to go How they calculate how much fuel is going to go in the dump truck and how it's going to be in the road. Because you can only travel the road with so much weight. It's going to be acid. It's extremely heavy. It will not, especially if it's cold, it's not going to be in the road. 
You're not going to get. You well, can't there's get so many in this house over here. We know that, but you can't get there. So no, it's different. you're going to have to stay. You're going to have to be prequel to us. Right. We ain't going to go in the house zone, and then once we come to the zone, that we strip down. We're not going to have much. Then if we get ambulances from like Hannibal, they'd have to stage on the north side. You should probably get somebody to it. Yeah. Yeah. Van Park stage over in the case. case. The world's full of people who want to see yeah. the looky-loos well, the world. Or they, or they don't believe they need shelter in place. I mean, what happened with... Well, but the question is, what were they planning to work for? The people who come out of their house, even though they're told them to Yeah, we have in all directions. Even in the most direct. Mainly, town women. That was on both those. Where's the gas station? You turn around. And then the back up here, I don't use the rust. Then you've got it locked down. Limit the gas And storm damage wise, you ought to be able to get in there best for you can go this direction. All we can do is start this over here. We've talked about the response to this. Uh, when we get there, our main thing we'll do is shut down the road, do traffic control, shut down, block the main roads into town first, and then we'll let people out, not in, other than authorized personnel. For you blocking off roads, you may be useful other ways that MoDOT offers. Remember them, they can block off, these they can get 10, 10 guys and trucks pretty easy. Yeah. Block off all the intersections north, south, east, and west, so that would free you all up to do other things. Something like this, we would probably close 54 at Scott's Corner and Basinger. Yeah. And we probably Kennedy initially there. move in closer, and then once they got there, uh, I think that's good. Uh, so you're talking about blocking off 54 um, with <coughs> signage and personnel? Yeah, we need trucks and signage. Yep. Either flaggers or we put up room close signs, whichever. Thanks, you know how long it's going to yeah. take? You know, if it's going to be an hour, we probably just put up barricades. He said they didn't go as far as go to Bay Singer Corner, Scott's Corner. Yeah. Do it there. So we can break people down from center if we need to. Or... Excellent. Move on to the fire side. Yeah. Hey, Chief. <coughs> In that truth, the incident, the fire truck on the wrong side of the railroad tracks. So it's <laughs> going to be a while. Because if the drift is going uh, northeast, if Substitute fire car, uh, railroad crossing would be to the southeast. Right. And if you decide, boy, that doesn't look safe, that means we're going to have to go a mile west, a mile south, a mile east to get to the scene. Right? It just, it just depends. So much of it depends on, on the vapor crowd, whether you could go down, could you cross down there, could you come down the street and warn people. And, and once you're there, Depending on the leaks, you might put a little water on it to slow down. But it's not going to slow it down very much because after a while the water's going to saturate <laughs> and you're going to have the vapor come off the water just about as fast as it's going to come out of the pure products. So, yeah, it, it, it so much as just depends. Did you all talk about where you might set up? Because it'll be you all that'll be setting up uh, command. So mm -hmm. did you all talk about where you might set up on this area? We did. If, if we have Martinburg and and Barber come in and Van Day even, they would be set up on the north side of the railroad tracks there. And, and again, with the damage there is, there could be little fires or house fires or brush fires or anything out there. So you, you'd work it that way and, and see if you set up out where anybody could approach the vapor cloud from any direction that's necessary. Yeah, we decided on this one that the main command center should be on the south side around the filling station on the south side of town yep. for 54 right? and that's completely out of the way but there are going to have to be people staged medical fire everything else on the north side of town because to, to get into town there's no you know, they're going to drive way around to get well, on the south took side. took out our parking uh, lot there basically report. Yeah, you know, that'd be a good staging spot. It's a little far. Poet may be better. Yeah. Which where? Poet area. Poet area. That's Poet about media. half a mile. Yeah, out, plus it's out of the wind area. should be out of yeah, the map. Right. That should be close enough there for that side. But Martinburg, but Wellsville, all them fire departments, I think, would be all taken out of the command center at the Philly station on the south side of town. Thank you for that. Mexico Fire. 
you guys have anything else to add? Yeah. It'll be there. We, yeah, we could provide, you know, depending on how bad Mexico's torn up. We could probably eight to ten people or whatever in an engine and if those small fires or people on air need to get in somewhere, we can do it. We can help. And they would be able to approach from the south. Mm -hmm. That's it. And their main thing would be personnel, STBAs, and everything more that in order to for, I mean, and to make more whatever they can spare. I know you know what we're talking about. Certain agreements you have with my number six. So. That's the only uh, one we have in Lagoon here right now. Yeah. But, and, and it's big enough for 500 people to stand around. And that's about what? Three, four miles out of town. So that would be well I was told it was five miles from the site. So that's, yeah, well outside of the area. Of the and can we have a can we have a pod agreement with R6 so that we need to take, provide any support to our first responders, whether it's tetanus shots, whatever, you know, we would be out there. And, uh, oh, is that just a med, um, mobile unit? Mm -hmm. Is that what that is? Okay. We would be getting with her for us because of atropine. Right. We would need excessive amounts. So we'd be supplying them and then they'd be funneling, Red Cross would be funding information to us and then we would be putting it out there because Chris and I are PIO. And I think more than likely with the instruction and cooperation of the responders, we would probably be able to order some requests to shelter in place. <coughs> because of the risk of coming out of their homes going through. Anybody in the immediate vicinity, we would just need, you know, uh, public safety <coughs> broadcasting in the streets for them to shelter in place, turn off their air conditioning units tape their windows and doors, sealing themselves off, in other words, until they're given the offer from public safety. And they're doing that act. And we, through police, through websites, well, we through... And we wouldn't do it until... Right. Well, I guess what I'm saying is if you can't have the police going through in, in that same area, you're telling them to <clears throat> shelter if you don't want them... The only way, yeah, we would have websites. We'd have people calling into our department. We'd be answering questions there. I think uh, what I'm trying to get at is you get the guy in the back of the room who's filming this. That, that's the point of contact that I Well, it would, it would be everything. That's it's television. It's exactly radio. Yeah. We, we want them to have a unified message. It's not one day. Television. Television. Uh, 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 message will get around. Okay, I'll, tell you, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you something. There's, there's a couple uh, pages. that out on Everbridge. It's going to go to every agency that's... Yep. Well, and to be sure that we all were on the same page here, we cannot activate or will not activate, I guess we could, but we're not planning to activate a shelter, even an evacuation shelter, until we get authorized by public safety in some fashion or another. And that may be three hours. Well, it may be. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. But my point is that we need to be aware that it's a part of your plan, y'all, as soon as it becomes a part of your Because we won't do, he's, he makes a great point, right. because we won't be setting up until we hear from incident command. Right. So who would be in charge in this scenario? Is it police or fire? Each department has their own. The incident command will This would be a unified command. Kind of be a unified yeah. deal, yeah. So, so which agency would contact Red Cross and Health Department? That would probably be left up to the emergency management, because I would be yeah. hopefully handling more of the logistical side so that they can do the work they need to do on the scene. What does it say in your plan? So, in the, in the hazmat plan, I have to look at it to make sure. Yeah. The long and short of it is we've got the personnel, they have the personnel, but we will not self deploy. We have right. to know that they're yeah. part of your yeah, plan in well, order I to be out of your way and, and be a help, be a support to the plan that you all have created. We understand why you're there, we know what your goal is. But allow us to be a part of that, but tell us as early as we are part of it so that we can be set up and appropriate in a school system or wherever it's going to be. Until you call and ask for a shelter or ask for whatever it is you want, about, you know, you're if, uh, staying out of your way. If you're needing, you know, like container boom or hoses or something like that to help support what's going on for either cleanup or containment, we do have a lot of that stuff. So, I mean, always feel free to give us a call and we can tell you if we've got something or not. Or, um, you know, same with some of our heavy equipment and stuff. I mean, things are in a bind. We usually have stuff we can help with. I might not be able to get any personnel, but, you know, I got material and things like that, so. What about transport getting it there? Yeah, ways to get it there? Do we need to get you equipment to get it there? What's that? We can get a trailer out to you all. Oh, you have a trailer? 
Yeah. And we've got an FRP spill response trailer, so we've got a thousand foot of containment boom. So say you had something going into a runoff somewhere and you needed more containment boom or your trailer was trashed or something. Or Do you need us to come pick it up? Nick, our road bridge crews would be available at that time. We'd make them available. And so yeah, but anyway, trucks, trailers, drivers, can come equipment. Do you have one of those trailers in the <coughs> facility, or is it just or is it a regional facility, a regional trailer? Or? Mm -hmm. We have one facility, and the trailer is at that facility here in town. Right, but I mean, they do, you, like Quincy and, and oh, Louisiana, Louisiana got stuff like that. They have their own trailers, yes. stuff yes. that you can pull out of trailers if you need it. We could, like larger yeah. Yeah, event. we could. Quincy's, Quincy's got a bunch, too, because they're right on the river. Right. Um, you know, we got a thousand foot of boom, which I don't foresee us ever meeting close to that. Because I don't think they'll ever use what's on our trailer that we have to go out in, but hopefully. Hope you don't. <laughs> That's right. Not that wide. No. 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 Another oddball thing that we have is drum overpacks. If you ever had one 55 gallon drum or four 55 gallon drums, we have the ability to throw those in a poly drum and overpack them. Just like a slow leak, like your acid truck or something like that. So, but obviously, we wouldn't be calling you guys saying, hey, do you need help? But if you guys need something, please feel free to contact us. And We'll help with whatever we can. So I know we've done that before when we had like the diesel mm -hmm. spill and stuff. The, the <laughs> I mean, okay. that's nine times out of ten, we're not going to be involved in all right, right, exactly. across the street at the gas station. <laughs> right, 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 um, right. But we are here to support and do whatever we can to assist our community. So whatever that means. I don't know, uh, this is kind of out of the district, but uh, would you like to add anything just on behalf of, uh, you know? Yeah, I think your school's probably school going to just be prepared uh, for, to provide shelter if necessary, and then also certainly, uh, you know, our school in Mexico, we run day routes all the time, going to all, you know, one of their field trips or, you know, so you want to make sure that you're not sending a bus up there to a, some uh, non-essential <laughs> and then depending on how long the cleanup takes you be prepared that you know you're going to be sheltering kids until they can get picked up or someone can get home. But they need to also reroute their buses if they would normally go through there. So North Carolina School to tell whatever buses have gone to St. Louis or to Columbia or wherever that they can't run through that door. We need public safety to communicate with that school so that the schools could get on the phone with the parents to really determine whether or not those kids are going to be released or not and then what route they would take. So that's where we need more public safety information to the schools. And based on the information that's here, can we make an assumption that there would still be people on site, still working about 3 o'clock in the afternoon if this incident happened at 9 in the morning? If that's the case, then we're looking at something later to be available later in, in the evening. And another part of our support, Red Cross support, would be uh, water and, and feeding for the team that's working. So all of these things, we would be glad to work with you, but we have to be informed as to your need before you have that need. The immediate emergency needs you can respond to anticipating that it may be a meal by 5 o'clock or 6 o'clock. Uh, from our health partners, SSM. I'm just waiting for my thing <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Now, I was told uh, during our planning process that you all might have some sort of uh, decontamination for folks that are arriving via ambulance that you can decontaminate before you get into the ER. Yes. All right. It's set up in the third ambulance bay. It stays up all the time. So, uh, not a lot of prep time. You'd have that available as soon as they start coming. Yeah, there's uh, 13 that's all been trained and we'll take them out. Medical partners, SSN, our uh, Arthur Center? She, they, would notify, they would notify us and then we notify our providers, nurses, et cetera, that they need assistance at the hospital. Uh, Steve, I think you'd probably want to be informed as to progress since we understand you all have the kind of the bottom line of how you pay paid for all of this time. So well and, and that's where that's a communication here. Right, that's, that's where that's where the communication with both the county MD, the city MD there, and 
organizing resources between the two. Because there might be a need, you know, I'm, I'm assuming that in a case like this, there would be an overwhelming need. And we would need to draw resources from uh, surrounding, surrounding areas, you know. And that might be out of county. That might be, you know, Montgomery or Columbia or, or So our plan for that is, if it's a significant enough event that we decide to open the EOC, that I'm going to the EOC, the associate commissioners are going to be out in the field getting reports from people and reporting back to me so I can give them the horn to get the resources we need. Whether, even if we don't operate the EOC, then my position will be in the commission office where I have my phones and contact with everybody. But I have that ability, the same number and everything at the EOC out of the jail. To me, the bottom line is communication from top Always down is. and from bottom up. We'll let you know what our needs are as we anticipate them, and you let us know how we can better meet those needs. And, and once that communication is established through either, whether it's through PIO or, or an individual call, that's where we can be responsible by understanding what the needs are on the field. That's the reason plannings like this are so critically important. So everyone in here knows what their job is, but it's also helpful to know what your partner is going to be doing, who you can call on for resources. Right. So our emergency management director is your logistics magician. You tell him what you need, and he's going to call me and say, I need you to find this for me. Or I need the authorization to spend this money. And if it's yeah. medications, you don't do that. And so I would we'll need to do it through the health right. Sure. But knowing that you have that job, I've right? got the ICS. We would have the would have communication with me. You need that communication. Yes, sir. I've okay. got uh, one comment. Just this exercise in particular highlights to me a need that we've not really talked about. And I'm not sure what the answer is, but as a citizen of Ladonia, I'm not prepared for this. No. And so I'm hearing this info coming in, help is coming in, I don't know what to do. So is there a way that we can get more information out to a citizen in the county on being prepared for different kinds of events? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I think uh, we, we have a little bit of a... Contact the Vandalia leader you. and we can put it on Facebook. And that yeah. and, uh, you know, training, I think that's, that's well, an important aspect of my office that uh, we need to make sure that, that, you know, I get out there and work with local communities in setting up training that they want mm -hmm. so that people can be more educated on yeah. You know, I mean, I've got, I can hand out all the pamphlets and books and events I'm at, but if, you know, the donor's not at my event, if people who live in that town aren't at my event, then, yeah. you know, so, so it might be just as simple as me trying to set up some training and some uh, more education inside the city limits of the county. Talking to city working, working with your emergency management. And that's, that's part of what this group is supposed to do. That's that's the the, the nexus of what, what you're supposed to do. Is how do we target those, those organizations or those communities like that? And, you know, if, it's, if, if, if it works with pamphlets and, and meetings in one area but not it for another, then as a group, you know, that's, that's, how you have, that's part of what, we, what we're supposed to do. I think that's a good point. You know, get get out there and get more yeah, Thank you guys. So for the courthouse. Steve, who speaks for the who speaks for the courthouse here? I mean at the yeah. health department it's me and if I'm not available it's Chris. But it would be you directed to you? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Yeah, that's that's a good question. Yeah, because in an event like this. Right. You want to do it through one source. You don't want a lot of voices out there. No, that's what I'm trying to say to a lot of times they can. <laughs> all right. Um, well, thank you all for participating in the exercise. Um, I think we've identified some really good things here in uh, maybe looking at uh, storm siren, uh, you know, abilities and upgrades uh, based on the age and based on what's out there now. Uh, looking at education, um, being alert enough to um, add schools and resources onto our list uh, so that you're immediately notified because before right now it occurs to me that there are field trips but I wouldn't even consider that school students would be outside of these schools. So uh, that's that's a good thing. Uh, I think a lot of times when it involves the school it's usually about health and safety and so what we are doing is we've got some programs where we're going to be talking about what parents do. They could automatically call the health department any of the first responder, we would refer to you, Steve. <coughs>
but anything to do with is it safe, what do I do in this situation, we would be dealing with that. So like town hall meetings, maybe we can tackle some of that together. If we're going to do a school, we might want to see what we're doing. Yeah, absolutely. And I think uh, making sure the parents, the parents and parent-teacher conferences, it's the perfect time to reach them. So we tend to do a lot of things there. Well, and making sure that our current notification system in Everbridge, it has abilities to set up groups. You know, uh, making sure that and we that have group is make sure that group is set up. So when we do send out notifications, that the schools are included on those groups. So, right. Well, thank you all very much for coming to the uh, exercise, and uh, we'll have a report ready later on for uh, the next.